Hi there, everybody. This is Apes Chapter 21, lecture video number four, I believe, actually. This is number four. Um, this little section of your notes is on ocean energy. Where does the ocean possess energy that we can harness and convert into electricity? So let's first talk about it. Ocean, the movement of the water, water, the energy travels through the, through the medium, the water, as a wave. So the whole idea is to see if you can harness this wave energy. And waves... You know, there's motion taking place. The water's in motion movement. So what you should have known by now is if we can get things to move, specifically we can get things to move around copper, specifically magnets move around copper, we can create electricity. That's one of the most common ways we do it. That's how fossil fuels do it. They, they heat up water. Water turns to steam. The steam turns a turbine, and the turbine spins the magnets around the copper wire inside the generator. So if you can harness the wave energy, and I see about the ocean, it's in constant motion. We just got to develop the technology to do this. It's expensive right now. It's hard to do. And that's because we haven't taken the time and the effort to, to develop it. This first picture here is showing you a really unique, it's like this giant snake looking thing. And it has these hinges. And at these hinges, you have hydraulic rams. And these hydraulics, which are they're, they're full of water. These hydraulics are moving these rams. So as it moves and it twists and turns, as a result of the motion of the waves, um, it can create electricity within the generators within that are being pushed. Um, the, the movement is being created by these hydraulic rams within the, within, within the joints of these giant uh, snake-like wave energy converters. This one here is a picture of one in Scotland called Palamis. The Palamis wave power generator. Um, I don't know if there's any others in the world, but this is one in Scotland currently. Um, another way to do this is you funnel waves into an area, okay? And as the waves funnel into an area, in this case, you have a column of air, and the air, the water comes in, and the air pushes on the turbine and creates uh, movement in the generator to create electricity. Another way, you funnel waves into an area and then you have reservoirs in which the water flows out of that would spin turbines as it flows out. So if you get water to go through something or air to go through a turbine, air or water, you can spin a turbine that way. And if you can get it to move or spin, you will create electricity because of the motion. By the way, wave energy, greatest in the open ocean, um, but it's very difficult to create electricity in the open ocean and then get it onto land. Uh, in, a, in, a, in an inexpensive manner, in a safe manner. Tides, well, you should know the tides um, from an earlier chapter. That's the rise and fall of, of the water line and what's it due to the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun on, on the earth. And the earth, water's not, it's not stuck in one place, so the water's gonna move as a result of that. So we have a high and a low tide. We have this happen throughout the day. Um, two highs, two lows in a day. What do they do? Well, one method is they put a dam across uh, a specific tidal basin. Why a tidal basin? Well, certain areas, certain places have a, a greater uh, a greater difference between high and low tide, like long, narrow bays. So this would be like a long, narrow bay. You put a dam across it, and the water rises and falls as the day progresses. The rising and the fall, you have barges below there, and inside there you have propellers, and you spin the propellers, you can create electricity that way. Um, basically, the, the, they're not doing this in a lot of places. I know South Korea is the largest facility in the world. You don't have a lot of these in a lot of places. Right? Um, another method is, is trying to just take advantage of currents. So, for example, there's the Gulf Stream current picks up this warm water in the Gulf of Mexico. It comes around Florida and makes its way up the coastline, moving all the way towards Europe. So this is a current. Well, we know water is generally moving in that direction. So if we can put um, turbines and, and generators underwater or in water where they're taking advantage of this movement of water, we can create electricity that way. That's marine kinetic of ocean currents. OTEC. Ocean thermal energy conversion is what it means, what it stands for. This is an experimental approach. So what do they what do they what do we know? We know that each day the ocean absorbs a lot of energy from the sun. So what water has a very, very high heat capacity. It takes a lot of energy to, to change the temperature of water. So surface water is generally warmer. And why? Because it's in contact with the sun. So look, warm surface water, about 26 degrees Celsius. Cold or seawater at the bottom, 5 degrees Celsius. There's a huge difference 
in deeper water versus surface water. So the whole idea of this experimental approach, you're not necessarily uh, going to be using, you're going to create water vapor, you're going to create um, vapor of another chemical, such as ammonia. Ammonia can, can become a gas at a much lower boiling point than water. So you create a system where the warm seawater can heat up a vapor like ammonia, like ammonia, and that vapor can become a gas. And now it doesn't have to be steam. It can be any gas um, that can create the pressure to spin the turbines and generate electricity inside of a generator. So this whole concept takes advantage of the fact that water has a much different surface temperature than it does a deeper water temperature. And you're going to be utilizing the differences in hot and cold. And this creates a current. It comes back, it floats back, it gets cooled down, comes back, it gets heated up and so on and so forth. So this is a closed cycle approach. All right. Open cycle approach, basically it evaporates warm surface water in a vacuum. Why in a vacuum? Well, in a vacuum, you can, you can increase or decrease pressure. So if you decrease pressure, if you decrease pressure, then it'll evaporate at a much lower temperature, then that in turn will help you make steam, all right? So you're doing this within a compartmentalized area, in this case, a vacuum. Why a vacuum? You can decrease pressure, therefore water will evaporate and boil at a lower temperature. If you increase the pressure, then the water will evaporate and turn into steam at a much higher pressure. So ideally you want it to do it at a lower temperature and a lower pressure. Therefore, it'll, it'll boil at a much lower point. It's more energy efficient. All right, I'll stop there.